And I'm sitting here and I'm recording this video. I know many of you may be insightful about this stuff, but I know sadly some of you may be rejected by some of this stuff, but I'm not here to change your mind. God wants you to be rich. God does not want you to be broke. What am I talking about? Let's unpack that together here in this episode of Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. What's cracking everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from my house here in Chicago, Illinois, and I'm excited for this final episode of the Vlogmas series, Money Making Financial Bible Studies. Yes, I know kind of controversial for some of you, especially with many of you not learning about money, relationships, sex in church, and you were raised in religion. Oh man, I know I'm rubbing some people wrong right there, but anyway, listen, I just want to make sure that many of you are clear and uh, certain about what the Bible says from the lens of an entrepreneur, from the lens of somebody that's a first generation cash flow millionaire. And one of the interesting things that we've found during this Vlogmas series of 2020, which is our first year doing this, we obligated ourselves from the December 1st of this month to the 24th of this month to say, we're putting together an episode every day for 24 days leading up into Christmas. If you haven't caught it already, please watch this Bible study here, what we discussed on the parable of the talents of what you need to do to make sure you improve and not operate in fear, but you operate in faith. And then last Sunday, we discussed a book that's made me millions, but understanding what Proverbs and Ecclesiastes did in terms of understanding wealth, prosperity, and happiness from the richest king who ever lived, which is King Solomon, what that meant to me in terms of my interpretation of how the application of this book, the Bible, meant to me. You know, oftentimes people say, Matt, you know, uh, you know, there's some misconceptions you have about your Bible study, your unpacking of it. Listen, I want to disclose to you that I'm not a preacher, I'm not a minister, I'm just simply a guy, just like many of you, who just picks up the Bible looking for, for higher learning, looking for wisdom, looking for guidance. And uh, <clears throat> my <clears throat> interpretations of the Bible, just like uh, Ivan here who, who, shoots, who shoots these videos for me, he says, my interpretation of the Bible was from a Catholic perspective. You went to church and somebody else read the Bible for you. And you went to church and it sounded like, whatever, you know what I'm talking about? It's just a lot of religious stuff. Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. A lot of religious practices, but you never got into the word. And so as I was growing up, I saw things like that and never really related to the Bible, never related to the church much outside of some of the activities they would do in the community. But uh, as I got older and I started having my own kids, I started running my own business, I was responsible for people outside of just myself, I looked to the book, I looked to the Bible for guidance. And when I saw the Bible, for the most part, a lot of people look at the Ten Commandments, things you should not, should not do, how to get to heaven, not how to not get into hell. And I started to open up the other chapters of the Bible. You know what I realized? God wants you to be rich. God wants you to manifest greatness and goodness for His glory, for His expansion of his message, of his agenda, not my agenda. And I realized that long ago that money, <clears throat> money was just not something to swim around in and throw around in and disrespect, but money was just simply for me, in my interpretation of it, as a tool. And in my opinion, when God sent his son Jesus, which is really the, the motivation for Vlogmas or the Christmas season to remind ourselves what the birth of Jesus meant in our life and in the world, is that God didn't come down here to send his son to establish a religion. He came here to establish a relationship with you and him through his son, Jesus. And I'm sitting here and I'm recording this video. I know many of you may be insightful about this stuff, but I know sadly some of you may be rejected by some of this stuff, but I'm not here to change your mind. And neither was he. You know, when, when I'm thinking about Jesus, when I'm thinking about what Jesus did here on this earth, and how he grew up with his neighborhood, and he grew up with his cousins, and he grew up with his brothers, and he grew up with his family, and he grew up with the people here in Nazareth, right? Imagine him here in his neighborhood, or you grew up, grew up in your neighborhood, <clears throat> and next thing you know, God is starting to preach the word through you. And I remember, uh, uh, I remember when the story in the Bible where Jesus started coming around, he started creating miracles, right? And, 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 and next thing you know, people are gathering, oh my gosh, Jesus is coming here, He's, Jesus is coming here. And he's here to create some miracles. Everybody, let's go down and see him. And, and the people that he grew up with, people were like, whoa, 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 I know Jesus. Is that the same Jesus we're talking about? The, the Jesus, the Nazarene, 
the, the kid from our neighborhood says, yeah, that's him. Go see him. He, he ain't no Jesus. He ain't no son of God. Are you talking to me about him? No way. I don't believe him. <laughs> well, that's what happens to many of you. When you go out there and you start to build wealth, you start to chase your dreams, you start to fulfill what you believe in your heart, you never know. And so when I'm reading the Bible, I, I, look, at I look at it through those lens. I don't look at it through the lens of some... Uh, somebody just flipping through chapters and looking for God and say, okay, here's what we need to do. I'm actually looking, looking for insight and looking through that lens. So perhaps in this episode, I'll give you the reasons why God doesn't want you to be broke, but he wants you to be rich. Number one, how do I know that? Many of you have the famous saying to me, oh, man, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to get into heaven. Oh, so therefore, man, you shouldn't be talking about getting rich. You shouldn't be talking about making money. You shouldn't talk about being financially free. You shouldn't talk about being a millionaire. Well, I'll tell you this. I don't talk about being a millionaire just to be a millionaire, just to roll around in, in money and, and just to, 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 to gloat about it. When I look at the financial resources that I need to raise my family, the things that I want to do in my ministry work and contribution I want to make to invest in businesses, I need to make a million bucks. Not because I just want to buy fancy cars or live in fancy homes or, or, or use money as a, as, as, a, as a status symbol. I use money as a tool. And when looking at Matthew uh, 19, which 24, which many of you say, oh, uh, it's easy for a camel to go through an eye of a needle and the rich man to get to heaven. For many of you that have those comments towards me, in fact, I agree with you. That if you think I'm going to be better than everybody else to get access to heaven because I'm rich, you're right. Uh, absolutely. However, I will say this, though. If you feel that you've been blessed with a business, you've been blessed with a potential to go to school, you've been blessed to be a citizen in the United States of America, I believe that you have a higher obligation to be a better blessing, a bigger blessing to other people. And just, again, I just want to reiterate, money is not a status symbol. Money, again, is a tool. Because if you go to number two, he also goes on to the teachings of the parable of the landowner and the workers in the vineyard. So people were working, this guy was making wine, he was growing grapes, he was growing uh, uh, olive, uh, uh, olives, and he had vines and, and all sorts of things on his farm. And he's going, to be, he's going to people and say, hey, listen, you want to work? You want to work? Okay, I'll hire you. You want to work? Work? I'll hire you. I'll hire you. I'll hire you. Okay, you want to work? Okay, I'll hire you for this one. I think it was called a denarius. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. I'll give you this. And then he, part of this parable says, oh, he goes into the 11th hour. He says, oh, you want to work still? You want to work still? So hold up. Wait a minute. In the 11th hour? So people didn't work eight hours in the Bible? <laughs> people didn't work seven hours in the Bible? He said in the 11th hour, he was still hiring people to work for that day. So oftentimes we're like, Matt, you know, I work too much. I work too hard, you know. You know, this pandemic told me to work from home. and did it. Said, Okay, understand with the pandemic, respect it. But here's the hard part with some people who are working from home. Sometimes people work from home and it's not getting the best out of them. It might be convenient for you just because you could do that doesn't mean you should do that. I mean, there's a bigger discipline of working in the office because now you're held accountable to somebody. Some of you call it the boss, and some of you who are entrepreneurs, you call it your customers, your shareholders, your board of directors. But he commands us not to be lazy because even in the 11th hour, he was still hiring people. This entrepreneur was still hiring people even in the 11th hour of that day. Okay, so he's hiring people, and the day is done, okay? And the workers come up and say it's time to get paid. And says, okay, for those of you who are hired in the 11th hour, pay them one dinars. For those of you who work in the first of the hour, pay them one dinars. And people are like, whoa, whoa, what? You're telling me they work for a couple hours for you, they get paid the same amount of money that I got paid working through the heat of the day? Why are we getting paid the same amount of money? You know what he said? The, land, the, the, the landowner said, will you agree to work for one dinars? I don't care if I hired you the 11th hour or the 12th hour. I, I, I gave you an opportunity to work for one dinars. And you said yes. So, let me break this down some more. For those of you that said yes to 10 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, don't complain. However, with that being said, you're not stuck there. Don't be lazy and say, hey, is there a way, can I, can I be part of this cash flow? Can I be part of this bonus system? Can I be part of this growth of this company? If I do my thing, if I'm not lazy, work that out with your employer. And for some of you that are entrepreneurs, this entrepreneur is still working in the 11th hour, still working in the 12th hour. I don't know, somebody around, around this country said it's okay to be an entrepreneur and be a minimalist to work less and make more <laughs> man isn't that what everybody's dream would be but that's not really the reality you ask somebody if you really want to build a real business that creates real jobs and makes real impact on people not just for a lifestyle type of business 
Because by the way, that's a different type of business. People have a lifestyle business. They have a business. They ever live, have a lifestyle versus people actually want to make an impact. Do two different types of businesses. But if you want to build a business to make an impact, you build and create jobs. You build and create departments. You build and create other businesses. Not just to be a minimalist. So therefore, you do a two, three, four hour, four hour work day and get to live your life wherever you want to live. It's no problem. But if you want to build something that lasts, that you want to create generation wealth, it's very hard to do something like that if you have a business that you're only doing for one, two, three hours a day. But if you want to build something that lasts, you cannot be lazy. And then number three, so what am I talking about? Specialize. Well, in the Bible, you know, you've heard the story of uh, Father Abraham. The old Bible song says, Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. And by the way, both uh, uh, Muslim and, and Christian and Jewish believe in Father Abraham because he birthed many nations through, through his, uh, his tribe. What was his tribe? The, t- 12, dri- the 12 tribes of Israel. And in, in those 12 tribes, it was, what, what did they do? Here, here, here's, a, here's a screenshot of what the jobs and the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were standing for and what they're about. They had many different names. Yes, they were all related. But here's the most important part. These tribes had different jobs. They made their money selling tents. They made their money uh, traveling across the country selling spices, uh, selling clothes, textiles. Some of them were warriors. Some of those tribes were warriors. One tribe, the tribe of Levi, it's written in the book of Leviticus, they were the worshipers. They were the priests. They were the ones closest to the word of God. So their job, they didn't have any other work obligation because they were supported by the other tribes of Israel. But their job is to preach. Their job is to hold Bible study. Their job is to preach on Sundays. That was the job of the Levites. When you're looking at these different tribes, however, they specialize in their thing. And what happened is they actually helped one another. So don't think that just because you're in a business that you can't specialize. You want to specialize to help others, to serve others, to improve your skills and abilities. Whatever you feel God has inspired you to do, go ahead and feel okay with being able to specialize. Because collectively, when they're working in their area of specialization, they got better. Think about this real quick. You go to a doctor, you have something with your heart. Do you want to see a foot doctor? <laughs> or do you want to see the heart doctor? There's a benefit of area specialization. And the coolest part about this is when you allow others to specialize, they get better in their area of specialty. So if I could become a better heart surgeon, if I become a better um, a person that makes clothes, if I come, become better of a person that understands construction, if I become a better person that understands law, if I become a better person that understands entrepreneurship and understanding winning the rules of the money game, guess what? Collectively, you are all better because you choose to specialize. And guess who gets paid the most in areas of specialization? Generalists or specialists? You know the answer to this, it's specialists. The general practitioner gets paid less than the brain surgeon. An entrepreneur is trying to do all things to all people, trying to create multiple streams of income, but hasn't created their Mississippi River of cash flow yet. Guess what, they're generous. They don't have streams of income, they got trickles of income. But you gotta find one area first to specialize in. The next one, number four, is to improve. If you go back to the book of Genesis, now everybody sees this book of Genesis where Abraham was literally about to sacrifice his son Isaac for the obedience of God. Okay, so obviously, make a long story short, he's about to throw down a knife into his son and plunge the knife into his son, and God says, oh my gosh, you really were listening to me. Hold up, <laughs> I want to bless you. I want to bless you right quick. Don't kill your son. Stop. Okay? But if you continue reading in some in some. Bible studies, they stop reading at that chapter. And my recommendation to you is, don't just listen to this video or just watch me share this video. I want you to go out and seek wisdom and understanding. Don't just depend on me or your preacher on Sundays or somebody who teaches you. You go into the word, whatever it is that that you're studying. Because in chapters 23 and 24, you know what he's doing? Abraham's talking to different people from different lands coming through his land. He says, where are you from? What country are you from? What tribe are you from? Oh, you're not even from us. You're not even some, from some of the tribes of, of Israel. You're from Egypt. You're from this part of the world. So what are you doing on my land gathering my food? <laughs> this is my stuff. Why, why are you stealing from me? Oh, wait a minute. Is the Bible talking about ownership? Is the Bible talking about real estate? Is the Bible talking about, hey, listen, I made this. Why are you stealing from me? I think so. And he's, he's telling them, why are you taking from me? 
How come you haven't learned how to do this? How come you haven't learned how to grow your own land? You're a nomad. You know what a nomad is? They go from here, they go to here, they go to here, they go to here, they're here, bum, 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 and they never literally settle down and want to improve. They just want to take from others. Woo! So yes, God doesn't want you to be broke. He wants you to be rich, but you got to improve. He doesn't want you bouncing around. He doesn't want you to have to steal and take from other people, church, government, charity, other folks that worked hard for their land to build and bust their businesses and create their business, bust their tail to build their businesses, to improve their careers. He wants you to improve. And so what are you obligated to do, in my personal opinion, which I might be wrong? God is instructing you, whatever talents and gifts and blessings and opportunities have come your way, is incumbent now upon you to improve it, to make it better. Don't just say, ah, by the way, that's probably the hardest times of this year because you're out there busting your tail, Black Friday, Black Friday gifts. By the way, let me ask you a question. Black Friday gifts, did you really buy gifts for other people or did you just buy it for yourself? Did you really buy a flat screen TV for somebody else or did you just buy it for yourself? I don't know. You tell me, you're the one that's watching this video. I'm not, I'm not you, know, you don't have to hold yourself accountable to me. You're the one that has to live with yourself and look yourself in the mirror. Did you really buy gifts for other people or did you really buy gifts for you with the money that God gave you that you're supposed to say, I'm supposed to give this to others, but you really bought it for yourself. Did you just keep it for yourself? And see, that's the sad part about what this Christmas season does. It buys into consumerism versus, hey, how do I actually improve? Because here's the thing. Let's say you did buy gifts for people. Awesome. God bless you. Okay. You want to be a blessing to others. You give somebody this, you give somebody that, you give somebody shoes, you give somebody a toy, you give somebody this, blah, 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 blah. Now, here's the thing. Who put skin in the game? in terms of buying it, working hard for it, wrapping it, and giving it to you, or giving it to them. You did, right? And how do you feel about giving a gift to somebody? Oh, you feel awesome, I wanna see the reaction, I wanna see the look on their face, da, 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 awesome. Oh, thank you so much, oh, da, 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 Merry Christmas, blah, 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 blah. Okay, when the gift giving is done, the gift exchange is done, and you see the gift that you worked hard to buy, to wrap, to present, and you see the gift just laying around, your kids just got the toys laying around, Who's angry that it's laying around? Them, the person that you give the gift to, your kids that you give the gift to, or you? Who? You. You know why? Because you put skin in the game. You sought to improve. You sought to earn. You sought to uh, purchase the gift. You sought to give it to them from the kindness and goodness of your heart. And what do they do to it? Nothing. They allow it to lay around. Mm, interesting. I wonder how God feels about the gifts he's given you. How God feels about the talents and the opportunities he's shown your way but you did nothing with it mm. improve my friends because God wants you to be rich not broke and last but not least I believe that God has been uh, trying to tell you for generations that this is an abundant world not a world of scarcity look what the look what America just did this look 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 what the federal funds rate did look what the Federal Reserve did last week in terms of the federal funds rate they dropped the rates again next to near zero. And guess what people have access to now? Capital, cash to grow the businesses, to invest into themselves, to invest in other things. You have access to it now, but how come you're not? Because possibly many people didn't improve. Possibly because people didn't specialize. Possibly because people were lazy. Possibly because people are operating in a position of being broke. Mm. So how come you aren't getting out this free money this government is handing to you? How come you're not buying real estate? How come you're not investing in businesses or going in business for yourself? You have access to capital. The federal funds rates that said, or the, the government has said, okay, uh, we're going to create an opportunity for people in America to become wealthy, to become rich. We're going to create a country. We're going to create laws. We're going to create a, 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 an economic system where people can go from nothing to something. They can go from broke to bond. So what are you doing with it? This is an abundant world. We just came back from a retreat. And uh, I, I can't tell you how many people from different backgrounds, from different countries, from different religious and sexual orientations, they come here to America and they do something with the talents and gifts and opportunities they've been given. They went to this million dollar retreat to become better. They went to this retreat because they want to associate with people who are also looking to get better. They will learn from people who are doing a lot better than them. That's what they did because they understand abundance, not scarcity. So when you're operating in this world, you say, listen, man, does God really want me to bridge? Well, if you're in America, yes. What a blessing it is to be here in the United States of America. What a blessing it is to be an entrepreneur. 
What a blessing it is to say, I own something. I have titles and deeds. I have something I can call my own. And so we are operating this world is this is the last episode of Vlogmas of 2020. And one of the things that I, I didn't think that would catch on in this whole Vlogmas series, we're, ep we're uploading an episode every day to the 24th was the Sunday morning Bible studies here of, of how I perceive and look through the Bible. And again, that's just the way I'm doing it. I'm not saying that's the way you're, I'm not pushing this upon you. I'm just saying this is how I'm perceiving this and how I can become better, how I can serve more people, how I can lead my family, how I can be a blessing to others. And guess what? It's not just reserved for me. It's a kind of upon you to do the same thing. And for me, the Bible has simply just been a guide, a guide that has allowed me to seek other things. And one of the books I've stumbled across as I've been seeking wisdom and understanding is a book called God Wants You to Be Rich by an economic philosopher, is actually an economics professor, Paul Zane Pilzer, who went to the Wharton School of Business. And uh, he says here in his book, uh, page 173, about saving money and using money to create opportunities for you. It says here, saving money is more than just a commendable habit. So you're making money, you should be saving money. Why should you be saving money? To fund other businesses, to fund other things in your life. So he says here, saving money is more than a commendable habit. It is a personal act of faith, a form of self-denial that expresses confidence in the future. A person who denies current comfort and pleasure for future happiness is demonstrating his or her belief in a destiny that can be controlled and improved. It is one thing to pray in church for God's favor. It is altogether a different proposition to deny your loved ones food, clothing, and shelter that they need now in order to have a better life tomorrow. And this is exactly what immigrants in the United States today and in the past have done for generations in order to take control of their destinies. Mm, interesting. Think about that. Think about what opportunity you have here in the United States of America to become a better version of you and your last name to grow and improve over generations. So as I wrap up, if you want to see more of these Bible studies from the lens of an entrepreneur, from the lens of somebody who's making millions of dollars a year and how we can apply it to their life and their business, their career, let me know in the comment section below if you would like something like this to continue. I was wrapping it up. This is going to be the last one because of uh, there's three Sundays in, in this December this, from the 1st to the 24th. I was going to wrap it up. But if you want to see more of this, please drop it in the conversation, the comment section below. Please keep this conversation going, Matthew, about how you perceive the Bible through the lens of an entrepreneur. If you want to see more of these breakdowns happening, let me know in the comments section below. For those of you that didn't catch the other two episodes, please watch these two episodes right here, The Parable of the Talents and the book that made me millions. And by the way, just want to empower you and let you know that it's okay to say, listen, I've been so weird. I've been so uh, uh, um, feeling indifferent with my family this, this holiday season because I won't get rich and nobody else does. It's okay. There are people out there that's meant to say, I need to be a generator. I need to be a creator of jobs. There's the difference between makers and takers. And right now there's a fight between the makers and takers. And the takers want to take more from the makers. And I just want to empower you. It's okay to want to do better and to become wealthy because if it's from, done from a place, of you getting rich, of you becoming wealthy, so therefore you become a better blessing because you're being used as a difference maker, then it's okay. It's moral, in my opinion. It's ethical, in my opinion, to say, go get some of that. Please make the next best version of you and create more and generate more jobs and opportunity for other people. If that means you making a million dollars a year, $5 million a year, $100 million a year, God bless you. You know, here's the crazy part. One last thought. I've seen a lot of people in the marketplace, I've seen a lot of people in, 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 in the business world that don't follow a faith, that don't follow, they don't go to church, they, 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 don't, they don't care about any of the stuff that goes on with religious practices or, or having some form of Christian or Muslim or, or Mormon or Jehovah, they, they don't give a crap about that type of stuff. But here's a weird part, here's a weird part. They may not follow God, but they follow biblical principles. And when they follow those biblical principles, their businesses are blessed. Their families are blessed. And they don't even connect the dots. Weirdest thing, weirdest observation in my 21 years, going on 22 years now of being in business. And for those of you that go to church, for those of you that follow a faith, how come you're not using more of these principles? How come you forget these things on Sunday afternoon or Monday morning? You forgot to apply the faith. You're fine in church because in that environment, you're protected. But listen... God didn't want to convert those who already converted. Your job is Monday through Saturday, so therefore you feel that you are a king in the marketplace. Well, then rule your kingdom. But if for the blessing 
of Sunday mornings or a blessing for some purpose greater than yourself. Well, that's the way, in my opinion, it's supposed to be. So that being said, guys, if you watch these two episodes, go get it and uh, go watch those. So I've been excited about this every Sunday. You guys have been excited about it every Sunday, um, the financial type of Bible study and how to perceive it. Anyway, that being said, if you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook and you're not following our business page, Money Smart Guy, please mash that like button, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe, hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episodes. Episodes help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, last week here at Vlogmas 2020, to meet again. I'm your money smart guy. To meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.